Excel can actually run its own reports, build its own dashboards, and generate its own forecasts. All of this may sound impossible, but it's not with the new Excel Labs feature, Agent Mode in Excel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through Agent Mode in Excel step by step. I'm going to show you how to get it set up. I'm going to show you what it's capable of, and then I'm going to walk you through a few different ways that you can put it to work today. If that sounds good, let's get rolling. Now, if you're not familiar with agents, a very quick introduction. Agents are AI models that can make decisions and run multi-step processes by themselves. In a traditional chatbot like a ChatGPT, you give it a prompt, it gives you a response. You give it another prompt, it gives you a response. In agent mode, it can actually reason and think and run multi-step processes without you having to intervene. It can plan out a process to deliver a goal or an outcome you've given it, and then it can run that process and adjust along the way. If something doesn't work, it can see it's not working and it can change its plan of attack without coming back to you. That's the main difference between agents and AI. You can think about it as one step before you have to give input versus multi-step, or you can think about it as giving specific response versus giving it a goal and sending it to accomplish it. Have any questions so far? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I read and respond to every single one, and I'm more than happy to help. Now, I mentioned this is only available in labs. It's also only available in the cloud-based version of Office 365 at a moment. So make sure that you go into the cloud, not into the desktop app. And then you're going to want to look for this button right here to go to add-ins. So I'm going to click add-ins. Now, I've already got it installed, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to search for Excel labs. Then a button is going to come up that looks just like this. It'll be down here, though. You'll hit add. I'll go ahead and open it up. And then the Excel labs window is going to open on the right. Now, there's four different labs that Microsoft is testing at the moment. We've got the agent mode, which is in the Frontier program. We've got the advanced formula editor. We've got the generative AI function, and we've got the Python editor. But again, for today, we'll look at our agent mode. So here's agent mode. It looks a lot like a co-pilot window, but again, it's going to have the ability to run multi-step processes and truly control Excel and work with different kinds of data. Whereas co-pilot is really restricted to well-structured data sitting in tables, agent mode can do nearly anything in Excel that you could do. There's no better way to learn what agent mode in Excel can do and what it can't do than by asking agent mode to build us a file telling us. So let's go ahead and set that up right now. Now, this may seem like a pretty basic question, but if you think about it, it's actually a lot of steps. We're going to ask it to create a new tab. We're going to ask it to build columns there. We're going to ask it to kind of do its own formatting. It's going to have to go through all these steps. Plus, it's going to have to reason about the question and understand kind of its own capabilities. So let's go ahead and put in a prompt. This prompt's going to say create a tab with two columns telling me what you can do in Excel and what you still can't do in Excel. We'll go ahead and send that away and we'll see what we get back. All right, you'll see agent mode is already reasoning because again, it's going to run through multiple steps for us and it wants to make sure it really understands the question and it's making decisions. It's deciding on a sheet name. It's finalizing a table structure. It's going through all of these different steps. Again, instead of that, I send a prompt response, I send a prompt response, it's going through and making all of the decisions that it needs to make. It's creating the plan to do so. And it's adjusting the plan as it goes along. And look at this, it has given us exactly what we asked for a list of what it can do and what it can't do. Also, if we look over here in the panel, it's telling us what it did a reason for 103 seconds, it created a new tab, and then it's telling us kind of the steps it did and the assumptions that it made from kind of that reasoning step. So what can it do? It can explore the structure, input and edit data, it can do Excel tables, pivot charts, formatting, conditional formatting, sorting and filtering, dynamic arrays, pivot tables, there's all kinds of things it can do. What can't it do? It can't access or modify other files and workbooks, makes sense, it can't do macros. It can use Office Script, so that's interesting. Can't work with Power Query, can't work with other cubes through Power Query, can't do kind of custom work, it can really use kind of the core functionality can't guarantee compatibility, call API. So really, it can do a lot of what you need it to do. A lot of the things it's talking about are pretty advanced features or things that aren't really kind of core functionality to Excel. So that's really cool. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, Finance Automation Insider. I send a new copy every single week and I don't want you to miss a thing. 
Plus, when you sign up, I'll send you a free guide to 15 five-minute finance automations that you can use today. All right, so now let's move on to our next example, which is going to be building a three statement model in Excel. So having it set up an entire three statement model, kind of that core finance function of the income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. It's on every probably finance test you've ever taken. And let's see how Excel agent mode handles this. So I'm going to give it a prompt. Now, you know, if you've watched my videos that I have the Spark framework, which is a way to get the best responses out of AI models. I am intentionally not using that because I want to show you just how much thinking and decision making power agent mode has on its own. I'm going to give it the very broad task to create a fully functional three statement model for a chain of three coffee shops. That's all I'm going to prompt it. I'm going to hit send and then we're going to see what we get back. So agent mode is starting its reasoning process with building the financial model and the approach it's going to take. You can see again, it's planning. Regular AI tools can't plan, but it can create a plan and run a multi-step process and design as we see now setting up a model structure that it wants to run. Now I will note that because the agents can do so much complex work, this can take 10, 15, even 20 minutes, but in that amount of time, it's doing work that would take you hours. So it's well worth the wait. But in the interest of time, we see the model is working. We see it understands our task and it's getting to work. So let's jump ahead and see what the model gives us. So let's go back to our very first example when we did ChatGPT to build a very basic three statement model. Let's see what happens when we feed it into an agent instead of a chatbot and the difference we get back. So I'm going to paste this in, create a fully functional three statement model for a chain of three coffee shops. I'm not following my AI prompting framework, the Spark framework, because I want to show you just how little guidance it needs to give you the output it's looking for. So we want a fully functional three statement model back. Let's see what happens. All right, agent mode's running and it has started its reasoning process. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I post a brand new video every single week and I don't want you to miss a thing. So agent mode reasoned for kind of in the 15 to 20 minute range because it was doing some really serious work. Now that's one of the things to know about the ages is it's not going to be the couple of second response you get from a chatbot, but that's because it's doing hours worth of work for you. It's going off. It's doing it. You can let this run and go do something else, but let's see what we got out of this. So we have the agent mode. It's understanding our task. The goal was to build a fully functional link three statement model. It's saying, I need to create all these things. I need assumptions, drivers, schedules, income statements. I want to output them on different sheets with a five-year timeline. It's listing out some assumptions it will use that we can change later. And then this is the plan it was going to work through. So it was going to do these 11 things and then make sure that it tied out. Again, a reason for 990 seconds before it started working. Went back saying, here's all of the things I need to do. I'm going to go through and work through all these. And then what it created and where to find it. So it gave us instructions saying, here's where I put everything. Here's how I formatted it. All of the assumptions it used and why it used them. What drivers it's using on the different driver sheets. This is really cool. The schedules, we've got CapEx, depreciation, working capital. Man, this is better than some financial statements I've seen out in the wild. Cash flow sheet, balance sheet, giving us all kinds of instructions on how to use this. It even went through verification and completion, and it fixed some stuff during the build that it noticed was wrong. This is not something you would ever see out of a regular chatbot like Copilot. And then here's how to use and change the model, and then some formula examples that you can learn from. We can come over here and take a look. So here's our full assumptions table. This is somewhere we can kind of go and do all the edits. We come into drivers, so we've got our We've got a number of shops coming from the assumption table. A lot of this is pointing back to assumptions or it's doing calculations. If I come over to the schedules, here's our PPE, depreciation, inventory. Again, all of this going back to drivers and assumptions that is all linked up. It's built this, it's tested it. It's got our income statement here. This is all again linked up. You'll see it's linking to schedules and drivers and doing the math. It's even given us some charts so we can look at our revenue versus our net income. Here's our cash flow statement, again, all linked up just like we want it to be, and then our balance sheet and the balance sheet indeed balances. We just watched AI think, reason, and build an entire financial statement model without us having to touch a thing. All right, so, so far we've asked agent mode to tell us what it can and can't do to kind of demonstrate that reasoning capability and the ability to really like think dynamically about what you're asking. We've demonstrated the capability of agent mode to build an entire fully functional three statement model. 
Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to have it work with your own data and see what happens. So I've got here the transaction data. This is for our F9 Finance coffee shop with three different locations. And I want it to work with the point of sale data and create a dashboard. Now think about how many steps that is. You have to go in, you have to understand the data. You have to go in and then you have to decide what visuals are best. Then you have to actually build the dashboard. It's a lot of steps. So let's throw this at agent mode and see what happens. All right, so we've got our agent mode panel. Let's go ahead and paste in our prompt. Again, we're gonna use pretty basic prompts just to see what we can get out of this. So I'm saying I want you to use table transactions to build a fully functional dashboard. That's this point of sale data here. This table has point of sale data for a chain of coffee shops. Make sure the dashboard is easy to use, well formatted and fully functional with no errors. So let's go ahead and send that off. Let agent mode do its magic and see what we get back. All right, and agent mode has kicked off its reasoning process. It's starting to plan the dashboard structure, starting to understand the question. Again, that's the biggest difference between kind of the generative AI chatbots and agents is that they can plan, decide steps, and also adjust along the way if things don't go as expected. So agent mode is finalizing the dashboard. It's shifting to the formula-based work it needs to do. And you'll see down below, I don't want to click on them and kind of disrupt the magic, but it's already created two new tabs for our dashboard and our dashboard pivots. It's still going. Can't wait to see what we get back. And agent mode has come back. It reasoned for 730. 33 seconds and is excited to tell us the dashboard is ready. It's telling us what it did. It built the dashboard, has some key KPIs, it's explaining the visuals, clean formatting, made sure that there were no NA or spill errors, explaining how it's work and what's on the dashboard as a quick guide. So now the moment of truth, let's go over the dashboard tab and see what it built. So you know what, it's not perfect, but it did a pretty darn good job. We've got some drop downs here that I can change between my stores. It's going to do this. It's going to filter. You'll see all the units change, the transaction change. It's fully functional. Looks like I can go to a specific month if I want to. Let's go to February and see what happens. All right, and all of it is updated to February up here. That is really cool. We've got some overviews here of units by month of the categories. We've got monthly units. Again, not perfect. There's a couple of things we'd want to tweak down here. We might even be able to ask agent mode to tweak if we wanted to. And then it's built a heat map. So with just one prompt, we have a functioning dashboard. Again, we're going to want to tweak it. AI is still kind of new in its infancy, but think about what we just did with a simple prompt with no additional guidance. It's been able to work with our entire data set. It was able to think about what we asked it to build. It was able to decide how to use the data, what charts were best, and then to start building them. So even if we have to go in and tweak the last few things, even if it's just 80% of the work, it did all of that thinking on its own. This is an absolute step change in AI's capabilities. And the fact that it's right in Excel is even better. Because if there's one thing that will always be true about finance, it's that you can never take people's Excel spreadsheets away from them. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out my video on Python and Excel. I'm going to put the link right up here. This is going to give you another great way to build automation right into Excel, the tool that you know and love. I'll catch you over there. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers. <music>